Hey, Decision Makers, today's episode is sponsored by Anchor. If you haven't heard of Anchor, it's the easiest way to start a podcast. Let me explain. One, it's free. Boom. Amazing right off the bat, right? Two, there's a creation tool that allows you to edit your recordings right on your phone or computer. If what has stopped you from starting a podcast is that you think it would be too complicated, Anchor makes it easy for you to publish your first episode today, even if you're not techie. Number three, Anchor will distribute your episodes for you at a click of a button. The moment I hit publish, I'm on nine different platforms, including Apple, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, and many more. Number four, the other amazing thing about Anchor is that you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership, meaning you can start making money from your podcast on day one. Anchor is everything you need to start a podcast in one place. With that being said, if you have ever wanted to start a podcast, Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Welcome, Decision Makers. Today, we talk about why your bed should only be used for sleep and sex. Welcome to the Deep Dive into Health podcast, where each month we dive deep into a health topic such as sleep, productivity, sex, and diet, to name a few with the goal of becoming the best version of ourselves with daily interviews. Now, before we get started, repeat after me. I play all out. I see opportunity where others see impossibility. I contribute to something bigger than myself. I stay focused and take massive action. I am unstoppable. I am a decision maker. Hey, Decision Makers, today's episode is brought to you by Audible. If you haven't heard of Audible, it's the easiest way to listen to audiobooks. If you don't have an Audible account currently, you can get a free audiobook today and a 30-day free trial to Audible as well. If you don't like it, which I doubt it, you can cancel before the 30 days are up and still keep the book. Isn't that amazing? There's a huge range of titles available, but I highly recommend you read Atomic Habits by James Clear. It's the closest thing to a must-read. Learn an easy and proven way to build good habits and break bad ones. Audiobooks are a great tool. We're constantly on the move, right? Well, with Audible, there's no need to sit down. You can listen while you're driving, exercising, taking a shower, pretty much anything. My favorite is while I'm doing chores around the house, like cleaning dishes. I honestly now look forward to putting clothes away because it's my time to learn. Another great thing about Audible is the ability to listen across several devices without losing your spot. I don't know about you, but I hate when I lose my spot in my book. Get your free audiobook and start your free 30-day Audible trial by going to audibletrial.com backslash John. Once again, that's audibletrial.com backslash Y-O-H-N. All right, decision makers, before we kick into today's episode, I have a special gift just for you. For many years, I learned and learned. I would read books and take courses, but my life was still the same. Over and over, I would hear the quote, knowledge is power. And then one day I heard Tony Robbins say, knowledge is not power. And it hit me like a lightning bolt. Knowledge is not power. It's what you do with that knowledge and the actions that you take that will change your life. It took me years, but now I have an action taking system and my life has never been the same. I believe this will change your life too. Go get your free action taking system at johndias.com. Again, that's Y O H N. D-I-A-Z. Once again, that's Y-O-H-N-D-I-A-Z.com and download your free gift. Oh, and you'll also receive a weekly email with a summary of what the episodes for that week are going to be all about. Hey, Decision Makers, and welcome to the Dive Deep into Health podcast. My name is John Diaz, and today we are talking with Chandler Walker. Chandler is a biochemist focused on helping people rewire their brain code to stop fighting lack of sleep and to finally embrace no more sleepless nights. Hey, Chandler, welcome to the Dive Deep into Health podcast. Hey there. Glad to be on. Thanks for having me. Hopefully, we can give people some nuggets of value and they don't fall asleep with their eyes glazed over while we're talking. Uh, here's so. I hope so. It's going to be great. Now, with that being said, the beginning of it is always just, I want to get to know you as a person. I want the audience to be able to connect with you. What are you most grateful for right now? Yeah, I think for me, I'm grateful for my health. I'm able to maintain. I'm able to go to jujitsu and do Muay Thai and stuff like that. And my relationships, I have a two-year-old daughter. She's the coolest person in the world. Like I never thought that I would have this tiny little best friend that I want to hang out with all the time. So it's one of the things I'm most grateful for right now. And then the third thing is just the business aspect where we've been growing, we've been scaling, 
it's troubled times for a lot of people and we're able to provide a tool to help people get through these dark times that a lot, a lot of them are going through. So super grateful that we can have a functioning, flourishing business in what's considered a pretty terrible time. I love that. Actually, I'm actually a father myself too. So I love to hear the other dad's perspective and hearing that the kids are, you know, just fueling you up. Um, and what are you most excited for right now? Yeah, I think I'm most excited for my bringing my daughter to all these cool events and stuff. Like we're in dance classes, we're in, uh, what else are we, gymnastics, we're doing swim lessons. So it's like everything's an adventure and she's two, so it, it doesn't even matter, but she's doing all these cool things. We're exploring all these things and it's like reliving life with her. Yes. Again. So like things like a butterfly, it's like, wow, it is a butterfly. Let's look at it. <laughs> I love that. That's honestly, that was one of the main reasons I ever wanted to have kids. I just thought it was so cool to be able to, to see life through someone else's perspective and like someone that's never seen. So I, I love that aspect of parenting. So that's awesome. Cool. Well, thank you for sharing. Uh, so the next part of the podcast is simple. We just get into your story. I want to know who you were before you became this expert. Like, who were you? Yeah. So I think it goes way back growing up. My, I had two, obviously two parents, they were divorced when I was about two, but my mom suffered from bipolar disorder growing up and she was never able to really figure out like what was going on until my mid late twenties. And so that kind of inspired me to want to pursue a career in, in health. And then on the other side of things, my dad was a small business owner, an entrepreneur. So from a young age, I would go and I would watch him communicate with customers, watch him sell jobs. It was siding in windows. And so I got to the taste of entrepreneurship, the taste of small of business ownership. And so those two things came together and I eventually went to, I graduated high school and then went to school for biochemistry and molecular biology went on a med school track, but I felt like as I was moving deeper and deeper into the, the medical side of things, I was more and more just giving people medications. And it was, it was bothering me to be in that position. And it's not a shot at doctors. It's, it's the system. You don't have the ability to follow through with people. You don't have the ability to do anything. They want meds, so you give them meds. Mm -hmm. And so I broke off. And because I already had the entrepreneurial side of things that I was aware of, it gave me more confidence to do my own thing. And so that's how I kind of broke off. And we started this wellness facility that we called Stone Age Fuel originally. And my dad told me, don't do it. Go work for the post office and get a retirement. And of course I did anyway. <laughs> and well, so, so that got you started, right? You had that background, the things that happened with your parents, but what caused you to shift? What, what was that moment in time that caused you to shift? That was like, okay, this is my moment to jump over. Yeah, it was kind of a, a collective experience. It was sitting there watching people interact with physicians and interact with everybody and saying like, Hey, did you make the lifestyle changes we talked about? No, but uh, I just want to eat steak and taters. I just need a refill on my meds. And I'm like, all right, man, I can't do this anymore. And so like, yeah. So it's like, this isn't what I got into this for. I got into this to help people. Like the Socratic oath is to put others first and then to take care of people and to do all these things. And I felt like that's not what I was doing. I was just giving pills. And so I knew I had the capabilities and the ability to pivot shift. And, and so that's when I kind of made the decision to make it happen. Oh, that's awesome. And what was that big aha moment for you that you're like, oh, this is going to work, All right? Because you had the belief that it was going to work and that you can go out and try it. But what was the big aha moment for you? You're like, oh, this is, this is my avenue. There was no aha moment. It was just like, well, let's do this. If, if we die, we die. If it burns down, it burns down, <laughs> but we're going to make it happen. <laughs> you burned the boats? Yeah. I was like, well, if it works, it works. If not, I guess I'll go work for the post office or do something else. <laughs> Perfect. So what was the next thing for you? What became the plan and the, what obstacles did you encounter on the way there? Yeah. So we went from the idea of being in like the medical world and going through school and everything to where everything's pretty structured. You just have to follow the directions and not sleep and work. And we shifted into business ownership, which now required that we not only were able to like see clients and bring in new clients, but we also had to manage a, a functioning business and learn what a customer touch point cycle looks like. So mm. the first year was working from like 4 a.m. to midnight. And it was just a disaster because we didn't have systems. We didn't have strategies established. I always said like, I'm destroying my health for the betterment of others. And so we kind of learned early that business ownership is a lot more goes into it than just like opening the business. Oh, I love that. And just, I, I love that you mentioned the strategies and systems, right? Cause I feel a lot of times as, 
as we go into our journey to get better health, we assume that, you know, it could just, we could just go and get that magic pill or someone's going to tell us one advice that's going to fix it all. Right. Matter of fact, reading atomic habits, right? Like one of the things that he talks about, it's not the goal. It's about the systems and, and templates that you set in life to achieve those goals. And I feel like that's what gave you power as an entrepreneur was getting the systems and the, and the strategies in place so that you can help others sleep when you are losing your sleep. Yeah, exactly. And it was like, hey, we can't be doing this 24 seven. So then we went in and installed systems and SOPs and staff and really tried to align with what do we want to do? What do we want to be involved with? What can we outsource? What can we bring staff to do? And how can we keep customer engagement and touch points high and how to kind of rebuild the whole business from the ground up? Perfect. Oh, well, and, and now getting into, the, into that conversation, right? Like now the business has grown and you're doing things. What's been the biggest achievement, non-business-wise, just like people-wise, what's been the biggest achievement so far? Yeah, so our system is built around rewiring the brain code through six key pillars of wellness. It's mental health, social health, sleep, nutrition, fitness, and ultimately habits. And so I think the biggest achievement for me is taking people who have suffered for a long time, people who haven't slept well in 10 years or ever, people who've tried every diet and can't lose weight, people who have been struggling with anxiety and depression for 10, 20 years and have never been able to figure it out or afraid to talk about it, and people who are suffering from a multitude of different issues relating to all six of the key components I talked about, we're able to actually solve their problems, which is neat because it's, I started equating myself to the show. Have you seen Dr. House? Yes, of course. So we're like the Dr. House of this industry. People come in, they're like, I messed up. I don't know what's wrong with me. I've tried everything. What can you do? And we have to just dive in and figure it out. Oh, that sounds amazing. It sounds like you're doing amazing things for people. And um, I would love to know more about who have you become on this journey? Yeah, I think along the journey, I've become more multifaceted. So in the beginning, it was just like, get through school, get A's, who cares? And that's what medical school does to you. It's like, you don't even know you're going to deal with people. All you know is you need to get that A. <laughs> you know, you're going to forget everything on the exam afterward, but you just need to get it done because that's, that's what they tell you to do. And then I went into the, the business ownership side of things in the beginning and sort of like lost my ability to empathize with people in the, in the beginning because we were working so hard and it was a challenge to get people in the door. And so after a while, I had to kind of regain that back. And now I think at this point, the biggest achievements for me are and the biggest place that I've gone into is I'm able to listen first, first seek to understand and then seek to be understood, which has been a pretty big pivotal thing for me because if I don't get offended, if someone says, for example, in the current climate, if someone says I'm Republican or if someone says I'm Democrat, I'm not going to get into a fight with them and attack them and like throw Molotov cocktails through their window. I'm just going to ask them, well, why do you, why do you say that? What's going on? And, and I think that's powerful for people to figure out. It's if, if you first seek to understand the meaning behind someone's external phrases, you can move in to understand the meanings behind their internal beliefs. And ultimately, you can figure out that most things that people say have a positive intent behind them. The key is just finding that positive intent and not allowing yourself to get offended because you don't understand the situation. Oh, I love that. Yeah, because a lot of times we just when we have conversations where we're like ready to argue with each other, like my point is better than yours. Yeah, exactly. And I, I always say like, there is no right or wrong. Right and wrong is a construct created around the moralities of the way you grew up. And that's your right or wrong. The construct of the moralities of the way I grew up is my right or wrong. And so what that means is right or wrong is ambiguous. It doesn't really exist. There is no right or wrong. There's only the construct we built from our model of the world. Uh, that's beautifully said. Perfect. So this part of the, of the podcast where we jump into is your, your teachings, right? If you could give us three to five breakthroughs or insights to, to get better sleep and just better overall health, what would they be? Yeah, I think the first thing about sleep is the idea of hours slept is a huge misnomer. I have people who sleep eight to 10 hours and they're waking up with headaches and they're completely miserable. And so the first thing we look into with people is quality of sleep. And so we need to understand how many times did you wake up through the night? What did you do before you slept? What did you do throughout the day? How did you feel when you woke up? What did you do the next day? And we would identify and we identify and keep a sleep log for a couple of weeks so we can look at patterns like you exercised this day, your sleep was better. So, oh, you, you ate a higher protein content this day. So your sleep was better. You you woke up before your alarm clock and your sleep was better. The next day you woke up with your alarm clock and your sleep was worse. So let's take these patterns and let's install these more often into your life to achieve higher quality sleep. And as a result, you wake up feeling refreshed. You wake up feeling happy. Your incidence of, of the second thing I'd look at of stress hormones is lower. So you're not going to have what we call like ghrelin and leptin that are telling you to eat more or eat less if you sleep too much or sleep too little. 
And so the idea behind quality sleep, I think, needs to become more prevalent than just hours slept. That's beautiful. So that would be number one, right? So it's just looking at the quality. And I feel like what you said, too, is just being able to to journal or just being able to look back at what's working, what's not, right? A lot of times we, we tend to think that things don't relate, but there's a pattern to how we live our lives and, and the habits that we create either create good sleep patterns or bad sleep patterns. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. No, I love that. And what, what would be number two? Yeah, I think number two and number three, I'll dive into number two as well, is people need a bedtime routine. And I think the most important thing that we set up in a bedtime routine is the idea that your bed is reserved for sleep and sex. So don't go into your, don't lay in your bed to eat chips. Don't lay in your bed to eat dinner because what you're doing is you're setting your body up to be confused about what that environment is for. And your body gets used to what you're doing. So if you're in bed and you're eating chips and hanging out, your body's not going to see that as a place to start going to sleep. So neurologically and psychologically, you're not going to start, start falling asleep. Whereas if you reserve your, your bed for only those two reasons, you're going to, your body's going to know lay in bed time to go to sleep. And if you set that up with a bedtime routine preceding that, then you have, okay, I took a cold shower. I opened up uh, number three, which I'll talk about in a second, but I took a cold shower. I set myself up for success. I turned all my electronics off and then I laid in bed. You're setting yourself up to have an actual quality night of sleep. I love that. Perfect. And number three. Yeah. Number three that I think is really important because so many people lay in bed at night and they struggle and they worry and they just sit there for hours like thinking because thoughts are racing and we're, and especially in today's world, everybody's just devastated. So I think the last thing you should do is as part of your, your bedtime routine is have a worry journal. So a journal separate from anything else you journal in, but you open it up and you give yourself permission for 15 minutes just to write all your worries in this journal, everything you're struggling with, everything that's going on, everything you're thinking about, and then you close it. You leave your worries behind when you go to bed. Wow, it's like a brain dump. You're just getting it exactly. out so you don't have to worry about it. I love that. Now, so do you actually recommend your, you know, the people you work with to do this on a daily basis? Is that part of, of the things you help them with? Yeah. So the people we work with, we have a 12 week curriculum that we work through and each week we add a micro piece of what I'm talking about to it. And then we instill these long-term strategies, these long-term habits that create success for, for the long-term for these people over the course of 12 weeks through these micro installments of the habits we're, we're creating, like the worry journal, like the bedtime routine and like establishing a sleep journal. Perfect. So a lot of the things that we got there were just kind of like how, how to impact sleep. All right, but what I would like to know from you, right, and looking from your perspective and your background, how does lack of sleep impact the rest of people's lives? Yeah, so if you are not sleeping well, you're going to release a hormone that tells your body to eat more. So you're going to gain weight and you're going to have a problem losing weight if that's one of your goals. If you don't sleep well, you're going to release another hormone that makes you store fat in your belly area. You're also going to put your body in a state of stress a stress state and which is going to increase the incidence of anxiety in your life. It can increase the incidence of depression. You're also going to get what we call like fuzzy brain syndrome. So lack of sleep when you're trying to do complex problems and challenging things, you're not going to be able to focus. You're not going to be able to concentrate. Your creativity is going to be lower. And so lack of sleep really impacts us mentally. It impacts us physically. It impacts the way our hormones operate. And ultimately, it destroys our, our life across the board. Yeah, and I think the idea that the entrepreneur mindset needs to be, I call it the hustle and pray strategy. Hustle and pray that something will work eventually is, is a disaster. <laughs> it's, been, it's the single biggest way to make entrepreneurs feel isolated, feel depressed. And, and I'd say it's likely what contributes to the rate of entrepreneurial suicide and, and it's instances like that. And I think it's a horrible concept. And, and you're, you're much better off to sleep a full night, to put your electronics away before bed, to set yourself up with a daily planning and routine. And like in our program, we help you plan your day. So what does my day look like? We set up green light, red light, yellow light strategy. So you know what you need to accomplish. You have a block system and your whole day is organized. And then at the end of the day, you shut everything down. Like I keep my laptop and this computer and everything here in my office and it doesn't leave the office. It doesn't go in the bedroom ever. And what it's done for me and for the people we work with is it completely changes the dynamics of the way you work. You work more efficiently. You're happier. You have more time with family. You're not miserable. You're outside of this hustle and pray strategy and your business grows and your life gets better. Oh, Chandler, I love that. That was amazing. And thank you for saying that. So now this last part of the, of the podcast is just a lightning round. I give you, we have four or five questions. You give me a quick, short answer. Deal? I like it. Let's do it. So what's your favorite quote? My favorite quote is by Ralph Waldo Emerson. When a man is pushed, tormented, defeated, he has a chance to learn something. And so whenever, my concept in this is like, I just need to make it to lunch. 
if it's a hard day and then I'm going to make it to dinner. And then if I make it to dinner, I'm just going to make it to breakfast. And, and when things get hard and challenging and you get pushed, you get defeated, you have the opportunity to learn from the experience. And that's ultimately how we grow. Oh, that was beautiful. Thank you for that. I love that. Perfect. What, the next one is going to be what book has, has had the biggest impact in your life and why? There was one book that I, I read a long time ago and it's kind of the cognitive behavior therapy Bible and it's called the, the feeling good handbook. And it really defines and goes into cognitive distortions, techniques of distorted thinking, why we have distorted thinking processes and what it really does to us incidents and contra contraindications of like medication and stuff like that. And so it's really helped me open my eyes to the way people have distorted thoughts in the world and where these distorted thoughts take us. All right. Knowing everything, you know, what life advice would you love to go back and give yourself? I go back and tell myself, stay the course. Like everybody's going to tell you, don't leave the medical field. Everybody's going to tell you, don't open a business. Everybody's going to tell you, don't do all these things. You're going to do it and it's going to be successful and it's going to work out in the end. So the naysayers are sometimes wrong because they're afraid of what could happen. They're afraid because they haven't done it. And they're, sometimes they are afraid you're going to fail, but sometimes failure is a fact of life and failure is part of growth. And that's really how you end up where you want to be. I love that. And I, I, I hear that a lot. And I love to tell people that sometimes the naysayers are family and friends. And um, the way that I personally look at it, it's not that they don't want you to succeed. It's that they love you. So they don't want to see you fail. Right. And they just, exactly. Yeah. And it's just like, if you look at it from that perspective, they just want what's best for you. But how did you develop that confidence to say like, Hey, I know a lot of people are telling me no, but like, I can still do it. I've always had this attitude of like, if you tell me not get to do it, I'm going to do it. I guarantee it. It's, it, I don't take no for an answer. It's like, I don't know if you can say bad words on this podcast, but it's like, okay. F you, I'm going to, I'm going to do it. So I, I don't know what's wrong with me, but no matter what, if someone tells me <laughs> not to do it, I, I will do it. And it's like, fuck you, I'm in. And it doesn't even matter. So it's just the, I guess it's the way I'm wired. And it could have been a product of like growing up. My mother was always like, Hey, do you want to do it? Yeah. Well then why don't you try it? What's the worst that could happen? And so that's my way of thinking like, what's the worst that could happen? Well, I don't know. I'll fail. Well, then what happens? Then I'll try again. And so it just gives me this fire and this drive like, Oh, you don't think I can do it. Well, I'm going to do it anyway. Or you shouldn't do this. Well, I'm going to do it anyway. Or you can't do this. Well, I'm going to figure it out. And so it's, it's probably just, uh, my brain rewired in the wrong way, but it works. <laughs> oh, no, I love it. Right. Cause I feel, I feel a lot of successful entrepreneurs. That's the mindset that they have. It's like, you know, I don't need to see someone do it or I don't need to know that it's possible. I just believe in it. So I'm going to go after it. But just knowing, you know, from hearing at the beginning and just hearing what you said about your mom was kind of like she she implemented that in you. Is there a way that you do that with your daughter? Is there something that you make sure like, OK, when, when she's having a tough day or she says that she doesn't want to try something, I push her in a specific way? Yeah, she's a little over two. So right now it's the other day we had this we were, she started being afraid of the dark. And so we're walking through the hallway and she stops and she goes dark and wants me to turn the lights on. And so to kind of work with her to get past that situation. So the dark doesn't become a continuous issue for her. I just grabbed her hand and I said, no, it's okay. Dark, not scary. And we walked up and down the hall for like 15 minutes together. And so ever since then, she hasn't been afraid of the dark. It hasn't been like a scary experience. And I think the idea behind that is you can't, I can, if I would have just pushed her out there and said, good luck, it would have been a horrible experience. But if I can teach her that I'm going to hold her hand every step of the way and nurture her through these challenging times and help her get through it, it's going to put the confidence in her that she can get through challenging situations. She can do this on her own and things don't need to hold her back. Oh, I love that. I love that. Perfect. I, I do a lot of things like that with my son. Um, and I just love to see that, right? Because I, I believe that the, the only thing holding us back from being who we want to become is confidence. And, um, you know, a lot of the times in life, we people either tell us we can't. So we we take that as now nah, I don't have the confidence or we look for outs, um, you know, for support from outside of the world instead of inner. And it's just like being able to give that at a child at a young age is huge. That's usually not part of the podcast, but that was interesting. That was good. <laughs> and the yeah, last question, <laughs> the last question is, what's the one question you're currently asking yourself the most? I always ask myself on, on a continuous basis, is what I'm doing in the business side of things, it's, is what I'm doing simple enough? And is my life simple enough? And, and I think the more we complicate things, the more challenging it becomes and the less likely it is that we're going to be successful. So I always look at it is what I'm offering to clients simple enough for them to understand and do? And is the way I'm living simple enough so things don't get complicated and convoluted because simple creates success and simple creates a unified theory or idea that people can actually follow through with and actually keep doing. Simply equals consistency. 
Oh, I love that. All right, Chandler. Well, perfect. That was, I mean, thank you for everything you've given us today, but this part of the podcast is all open to you. You know, where can we find you? How can we find out more about you and what you do? Um, yeah. Just tell us more about, about your product. Yeah. If you, I have a training video that you can get. It's the five steps to finally sleep well again. You can go to facebook.com forward slash Chan's logic and send me a DM that says sleep and I'll send it right over to you. It lives in my Facebook group. If you just want to check me out, just go to my Facebook page. I'm pretty active there or send me a friend request on my personal Facebook page and we can kind of hang out. I put all sorts of content out and I'm always writing and, and doing interesting things. Perfect. So I'll definitely link all these things to, to the show notes. Are there any last thoughts that you want to leave us with? I think my last thought and, and thinking about this podcast is it's, it's never too late. I think so many people spend time waiting. They spend time wanting, they spend time wishing they're afraid to take a leap. They're afraid to take action. They're afraid to do anything to level up their life. But I think we need to shift our philosophy and look at it if, as if I don't make a change and I continue to live this way, am I going to live with the pain of regret? which is the biggest pain that anybody could go through. And, and I think if that's the pain you're going to live with, do anything in your power to change that. I have people who told me they would pay any amount of money, tens of millions of dollars to go back and change things when they could have instead of just wait forever. Oh, I love that. Chandler, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Hopefully everybody enjoyed it and they got some value out of it. All right, Decision Makers, another amazing episode in the books. And I just want to thank, uh, take a second once again to thank Chandler. That was amazing. And here are the top three takeaways that I took. And I want to make sure that you understand so you can start putting these things into action. The first one was to understand that it's not about the quantity of sleep. It's about the quality quality of sleep. And try to realize what patterns can you set up ahead of time, right? Your bed hygiene so that you can do these things. The second thing that I took was that bed, your bedtime routine, right? And that bed should only be used for for sleep and sex. And I thought that was so, so great. And just, you know, don't go eat chips in your bed. Don't go watch a movie in your bed. Like, try to make it where your body knows that if I step into this, one of two outcomes are going to happen, right? So I think that was amazing. And the last thing that he shared was the worry journal. And I know other people have shared it already on the podcast, but I think it's so impactful to see that. And the pattern that th this one thing is coming over and over again. It's being able to, you know, grab pen and paper and put all your, all those thoughts, all that monkey brain information that's running through your head and put it on paper to get it out of you so that you could be more calm and relaxed and prepare for bed. So with that, decision makers, I hope you, you take some action today. Remember, knowledge is not power. Knowledge is only potential power. So once you start taking the things that you learn and put them into action, that your life is going to change. And that's when you will become a decision maker. Thank you so much for tuning in. I don't take your time lightly, and I appreciate that you made the decision to listen to the podcast today. Now, don't forget to subscribe to the show. And finally, please take a minute to rate and review the podcast. Once again, thank you for listening. And remember, you are a decision maker, and you are just confidence away.